Hello, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us here for Denver 7 News at 11. I'm Jason Granauer. More on air pollution concerns near the Suncor plant and the new job for a former Broncos coach in just a moment. But we begin today on the COVID vaccine front. FDA vaccine ad advisors rather are meeting right now to talk about the future of COVID vaccination here in the US. This is a live look right now at the agency's YouTube page. Advisors are discussing possible recommendations for the country really moving forward. Now, as it stands, the US offers a primary series of shots followed by booster shots, but those multiple variants have complicated things. FDA advisors are considering a shift to once a year COVID shots similar to the flu vaccine. Here's Colorado vaccine chief on that idea. Yeah, um, so the, the recommendation from CDC is actually a, a bit more simple with this Omicron um, booster than it has been for previous booster doses. So we're really, we're really talking about anyone six months of age and older who has completed their primary series, um, they should go on and get that Omicron vaccine once, right? Um, at least two months after they completed their primary series. Now, if you're wondering about effectiveness, if you should even bother getting the booster at all, well, updated COVID-19 boosters do offer substantial protection against coronavirus. That's the latest finding in new studies released by the CDC. It says those boosters cut a person's risk of getting sick from the virus by about half. Researchers say recent data shows updated boosters include protections against infections caused by the rapidly spreading XBB15 subvariant. They looked at COVID test results for adults at pharmacies. They showed that people who were negative for COVID in most cases had gotten boosted. The CDC study shows an updated boosters are the most effective for younger adults. So going a little bit deeper, where does our state rank? Well, the state's immunization chief told us more than 1 million Coloradans have gotten the newest booster. Our vaccination rate in Colorado is 26%. That is 11 points higher than the national rate. I looked it up this morning. Only just a little bit above 15% nationwide have gotten their updated booster shot. Older Coloradans over 65 are more likely to get boosted. Their rate's about 45%. That booster is still free and Routh, at our local state health department encourages people to get that booster now while it is free before it could potentially move into the commercial sector, which she says will happen later on this year. Some national news now also on the health front. Federal authorities have charged more than two dozen people across five states for coordinating a scheme to sell fake nursing school diplomas and transcripts to thousands of people. Some of them are apparently now currently working at healthcare facilities. ABC's Alexis Christophorus has the details. Today, authorities warning healthcare facilities across the country of a massive and coordinated operation that sold more than $100 million worth of fake nursing diplomas. When we talk about a nurse's education and credentials, Shortcut is not a word we want to use. Dubbed Operation Nightingale, federal officials say the scheme involved executives from three Florida-based nursing schools who allegedly sold over 7,600 bogus nursing diplomas for about $15,000 apiece. Those fake diplomas allowing people to skip hours of clinical training, qualifying them to sit for the National Nursing Board exam with the potential of putting patients' health and safety at risk. Some of the students allegedly using those fake diplomas to secure nursing jobs in other states without proper training. To date, we have not learned of nor uncovered any evidence of patient harm stemming from these individuals potentially providing services to patients. Authorities have charged 25 people across five states, Florida, New York, New Jersey, Delaware, and Texas. Authorities are now working with licensing boards in each state to make sure anyone who got a fraudulent diploma no longer provides care. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. Here at home, investigators are looking for the person who shot in an Arvada mall yesterday. One person was hurt at the Berkeley Village Shopping Center near 52nd and Sheridan. You can see the bullet holes there in the glass. Two cars were hit as well. The Jefferson County Sheriff's Office says this was not random and the suspect was shooting at someone inside a car. As of this morning, they have not released a description of the suspect that they're looking for.
More concerns surrounding the Suncor refinery. It's been shut down for weeks now after fires there in December. Well, that incident has many who live nearby worried about pollution that would add to a history of environmental concerns coming from that plant. Here's Denver 7's Veronica Acosta. For weeks, the Suncor refinery has been closed, but the neighborhood in its shadow is as open as ever. People driving to work, living their everyday lives, taking in a breath of air. We're breathing it in. Breathing this in, whether good or bad, is the reason Olga Gonzalez and a group of other women in the Illyria Swansea neighborhood got these. Air quality monitors. It'll tell us at what point we should be concerned and maybe decide to stay indoors and not have our children play outside. It's telling us at what level and, it, and our um, data will tell us at what level is it of concern to people who have compromised immune system or children or anyone in general. It's a very complex monitor and inside are instruments that are measuring on a continuous basis what is in the air. So things like benzene and particulate matter. Because despite the refinery being closed until at least March, Gonzalez says the women who make up the group called Cultivando want to make sure their families are safe. We had community members, especially mothers, telling us that their children were sick, that they had nosebleeds, that they couldn't breathe. By making sure they're able to pick up on anything that might be harmful and so their kids can be here without concern. Gonzalez says Cultivando partners with a company that's out in Boulder. They analyze all of the data that comes from those air quality monitors. She says they expect a report here really soon. As soon as we have it, we'll bring you that information. In Denver, I'm Veronica Acosta, Denver 7. Veronica, thank you. There is some good news for the country's economy. It reportedly grew faster than expected during the late part of last year. However, fears of a recession are still there. Today, the Commerce Department reported that gross domestic product increased 2.9% in last year's fourth quarter. That's from October to December. Jobless claims also continued to fall during that time as well. Even still, the new report didn't cause much of a reaction on Wall Street, and everything stayed pretty much the same. Now here in our state, the Colorado Public Utilities Commission is looking into what most Coloradans are dealing with, and that would be rising utilities bills. I know my Excel bill doubled, if not tripled, from last year. Now, the commission met yesterday. It suggested Coloradans sign up for low-income utilities programs, but not everyone qualifies for those. The commission also talked about requiring utility companies like Excel to offer budget billing, meaning payments are the same every month. So ideas were discussed, but what action will and if any will be taken? Well, we will definitely keep you posted. We can tell you that the PUC's actions in the past have been to approve all five of Excel's rate hikes last year, despite knowing that that company made hundreds of millions of dollars in profit. Increases that were approved from the commission this year are substantially lower than what the utilities had initially requested after having been reviewed by staff and lots of other parties, the utility consumer advocate, other consumer groups, lots of folks weigh in on, on those things. So Excel claims the rate hikes are necessary due to rising gas prices. And while we're still in the winter and the very cold part of the winter, it's unlike you're, unlikely your bills are going to get any cheaper anytime soon. Now, as for energy assistance, Colorado's low income energy assistance program can help some people with their heating costs. It depends how much money you make to qualify. You have to make under sixty three thousand dollars a year for a family of four to learn more or to fill out an application. Go to the website there at the bottom of your screen. Colorado Congressman Ken Buck and Missouri Senator Josh Hawley want to ban TikTok, and we're talking about every American's phone. Now, the two Republican lawmakers introduced a bill to the Senate to do so today. Buck says the social media app poses a risk to privacy and national security. Its parent company is a Chinese company. This comes after the House banned TikTok from all government devices just before the new year. Keep in mind, any ban would have to pass the Democratic-controlled Senate. New this morning, recently fired coach Nathaniel Hackett. Well, he's no longer with the Broncos, but now he already has a new job with a new team. He was officially hired by the New York Jets to be their offensive coordinator. Hackett, of course, did not survive his first full year with the Broncos. A 4-11 record will do that. It was a well-documented fall from grace. We've talked a lot about it here on this program. Now, he has connections, though, with the Jets head coach Robert Sala. They worked together in Jacksonville in the past. Now, as for the latest on the Broncos search for a new head coach, our Broncos insider Troy Rank says... Two candidates are gaining momentum. 
49ers defensive coordinator D'Amico Ryans and former Stanford head coach David Shaw. Now, Ryans would be a first-time head coach, which historically has not worked out that well for the Broncos. But former players say he has confidence, he is a leader, he thinks outside the box. Ryans is also up for the head coaching job with his old team, the Houston Texans, and he's not planning on scheduling an interview until after his team plays in the NFC Championship game. That's on Sunday. Now, as for Shaw, he hasn't interviewed with any other teams that we know of and hasn't really been on the radar for that long, but he does have Stanford connections with the Broncos ownership group. Greg and Kerry Penner and Condoleezza Rice, they all went to Stanford where Shaw coached. Well, still to come, preserving memories of the past for generations to come. One Colorado classroom is doing it in a unique and new age way. Coming up, how the students used 3D technology to make it happen and what's next for them.